was the worst weather ever when we were in Batumi. My name is Claire and I'm currently exploring Georgia. And in this video, I'm gonna try and make the best of a very, very damp couple of days in Batumi. We arrived here around seven last night and we just checked into our hotel. We're staying at the lovely Rooms Hotel, which is a new hotel in Batumi. Just had some dinner downstairs, had a little bit of Georgian wine, probably a little bit too much Georgian wine. I can feel it today. I've been doing dry January up until now and then drank a load of Georgian wine. So uh, need to get off and get moving. And then we'll go out and I'll show you everything there is to see in Batumi. All right, we have had breakfast and now we are about to go out and see the city. While we get very soggy on a Batumi walking tour, let me tell you a little bit about its history. So the city was established in around the 5th century BC. It was originally founded by Greeks, but then it became part of Georgia in the 6th century AD. It was under Ottoman control for around three centuries and the population converted to Islam, but it still maintained its language and culture. During the Russian-Turkish War, Georgia then became part of the Russian Empire and Batumi was under Russian control. It was also part of the Soviet Union from 1921 to 1991, but like the rest of Georgia, it gained independence in 1991. Before the 19th century, Batumi was just a small village, but it's developed a lot in the past few decades and it it's now the premier gambling destination of the Black Sea, but we were here to see what else it had to offer, and there is a lot more. Whew. Unfortunately, the weather is not good. <laughs> so we had a little walk around the city, but I'm hoping to be able to go and like revisit some of the sites tomorrow, and I'll be able to explain a little bit more about them then. Then we sheltered in a restaurant called Burn for lunch, and this was a traditional Georgian restaurant, and we had Kachapuri. And, and Gianni Cacciapuri to be specific, which is the most famous Cacciapuri, but it comes from this region of Georgia. So we had that. It was good, but it was very heavy. I could only have about half of it, but we did also have a uh, lobby, which is like a bean stew. And oh, I can't remember what they're called, but they're these eggplant rolls with walnut paste in the middle. They're delicious. I ate them all the time when I was here last time. So we had those. So it was a good lunch, but quite a fitting lunch. <laughs> And then we've just been looking around the archaeological museum. So, I mean, Georgian history is so old. They were like the first Europeans, basically. And um, yeah, we've just been learning all about the archaeology and the different eras, um, all the different sort of potteries and coins that have been founded. So if you're interested in archaeology, I definitely recommend this museum in Batumi. Not sure what the plan is now, as it's very, very rainy but hopefully we'll find something else indoors to do. We are wine tasting. So we were in the hotel room, but then we decided to come out again because we were like, we're in Batumi. We need to need to do something even though it's raining. And we decided to go to a wine bar and came to the wine bar, sat down and they were like, oh yeah, we do wine tasting. And um, it's 30 Larry for like three wine tastings, which is like 10 pounds. So not bad at all. Um, so we've tried all of these wines and we actually got an extra wine as well because the wine maker of one of the wines was in the bar. So he gave us an extra wine. So this, this would only happen in Georgia. So we, yeah, had, had a few wines, all very tasty. Honestly, Georgian wine is the best. Like wherever you are in Georgia, you can find excellent Georgian wine. Highly recommend <laughs> any wine lovers visit this country. This is Midi Wine Bar. And yeah, highly recommend visiting here if you're in Batumi. We are back at the hotel. We've just ordered dinner at the hotel's restaurant, but I thought now might be quite a good time to show you around. So I'm just in the kind of the very extended lobby. There's loads of like chill out spaces, places you just kick back and relax. There's a little like kind of library here. It's very quirky. There's loads of like vintage decor and stuff. A very, it's a very cool space, a very modern space. And I think it's a very sustainable space as well. So I'm really loving this hotel. It's a Georgian brand. They have hotels in Kazbegi, Tbilisi, and they just opened this one last year. So um, yeah, they're sort of doing a big push for this one now, but honestly, it is such a nice hotel. It's very, like, feels very luxurious. Our room is incredible. I'll show you around that in a moment. Um, but it also feels very like hip and just like sustainable minded. So I would definitely recommend staying here if you're in Batumi. Like, I don't think there's anywhere better. Okay. 
All right, it's the next morning and it did stop raining for a bit and I was gonna go out for a run and now it's raining again. I am still gonna go for a run though because I need to do a bit of exercise, but that's a shame. So it looks like I'm gonna get soggy again. I'm gonna take my camera with me just because I do wanna take some photos and some video. I wanna show you some of the architecture in between me because it's really cool, but just be aware that it is very rainy so it's not gonna look its best. However, I did just wanna do a quick tour of this hotel room while I'm here. This is honestly one of the coolest hotels I've ever stayed in and if you're staying in between me I highly recommend here. It's just a, such a nice space like such a modern contemporary relaxing space and rates start at about 50 euros per night so it's quite affordable. This is the outdoors bit now I think they are actually putting windows here so this actually goes straight outdoors at the moment and you can just see sort of trees down there you can see the rain. Um, but I think they are actually putting windows in here because yesterday they put all the windows in this floor here really really quickly so I presume in the next week or so these will probably also have windows in but I'll just go into my room so here we have a huge mirror excuse the tracksuit and then this is where all of the stuff is but they've got sort of storage space here and then <laughs> look at this so we've got massive tv we've got telephone tea and coffee making just really nice lighting contemporary furniture look at this sofa such a relaxing space bed super comfy super king size bed so i had a great night's sleep in that and then we'll go through the double doors to the bathroom. Then in the bathroom, we've got a huge mirror. We've got sink and look at the shower. And then we've got a couple of, well, three small balconies, which is a shame, just a shame about the weather. If you're staying in Batumi, I really don't think there is anywhere better to stay than the Rooms Hotel. <laughs> it is still raining, but I'm going to go and make the most of it. The thing is, I think we've just been very unlucky because tomorrow it's going to be very sunny in Batumi, but we will already be at our next destination. Tuesday it's going to be, it's, like, it's not going to rain like this for the rest of the week basically, and it hasn't rained like this for the rest of the week. So I think generally Batumi in winter is quite mild. But regrettably, we've just been extremely unlucky. But never mind. We have to make the most of these things. So let's go. It doesn't look too bad, actually. Yeah. I think it might have stopped, actually, briefly. So let's go see what we can see. see them as well now but behind me sort of here are like snow covered mountains so it is a really interesting region because it goes from the black sea which is here and then straight up to the mountains so you've really got the contrast of seaside mountains if you want you know if you can't decide whether you're a beach or a mountain person a jara has both <laughs> so this clock tower behind me is the chacha tower it used to have Cha Cha Fountain. So if you don't know what Cha Cha is, it's a Georgian spirit. It's very strong. I tried it once when I was here last time, and yeah, it was not my kind of thing. I'm not really a fan of strong spirits, um, but it's very popular. And they used to have 15 minutes every day. They used to have a fountain of Cha Cha. So imagine a fountain of very strong spirits, and you could just come here and drink and be merry but I think some people got a little bit too merry some people got very very drunk so they stopped doing it but yeah this is, this is what this used to be oh yeah it says here cha cha fountain <laughs> it's just so georgia look at it hello hello gotta go you can come with me yeah you can come with me if you want <laughs> so if you're a dog lover <laughs> Georgia is like the best place to visit <laughs> because um, there are lots, there are, they are street dogs, but they're very well looked after. They're vaccinated. They're very, very friendly. Love people. If you give them a bit of attention, they will follow you around the city. Hello. Hello. <laughs> 
so easily if you're a dog fan and if you, you know, stroke a dog and chat to a dog when they come up to you, then you will usually end up with about four or five pets following around quickly. But to me, that is just another plus of travelling in Georgia. <laughs> I've got a new tour guide showing me around between me. I know he's wandered off now. <laughs> right. Oh, oh, it's so wet. Right, I'm walking towards the Alphabet Tower. Oh, my tour guide's come back. Can you show me the Alphabet Tower? Yeah? Come on then. Come on then. Alphabet Tower, son. Good boy. So, we're walking. My, me and my new pet are walking towards the. Where's he gone? Here he is. This happened so much in Georgia last time I went to BC. I would just like have a dog follow me around for the day, like every day I day I went out. <laughs> but they're very friendly and they're vaccinated and they're yeah, they're literally just like pets, like they're never territorial or anything like that. I know. Yeah, we're going to the alphabet tower, aren't we? So, um yeah, just in front of <laughs> to my dog now. Um, just in front of me is the Alphabet Tower and this was built to celebrate the Georgian language. So the Georgian language is very unique. It has 30, 30 something letters, 31 or 32 or maybe 33 letters in it and it has all the similar sounds as you'll have in sort of the English language or you know languages that use the Latin script. It has a couple of extra sounds as well and it was recognised as one of the 14 like scripts of the world so along with like latin cyrillic mandarin chinese and the language itself is very unique it's not difficult to but like, i don't think it's super difficult to learn like basics but i'm not sure what the grammar is like i do know gamma Java is hello and madlaba madlaba something like that is thank you i need to need to revise that one. Uh, so it's all different letters of the alphabet going up here and at the top there is a restaurant. <laughs> I'm walking up to what is perhaps the most bizarre example of the TV's bizarre architecture, this building. <laughs> it has a first wheel in the building, like the sort of the building cut out of it and then there's a mini little first wheel there. And um, it's a casino at the bottom and I can't remember what I think maybe it's a hotel around it, but it's just very bizarre. Like, it is these kind of funky buildings, and obviously the casinos, that do give the city its nickname as the Las Vegas of the Black Sea. <laughs> and if that's your thing, then you definitely can have a spot of gamble in here, but you don't have to do, like, it's not super in your face, there's just casinos dotted around here and there. It's to be lessening again now, and no big sky but it's brightening up maybe a little bit this building here just looks like a wave but <laughs> there's just so many funky buildings here it almost reminds me of Astana in the uh, castle of Kazakhstan which again like I mean Astana is quite a conservative city not like Batumi there's no, no casinos everywhere but there is the jazziest architecture One thing that I just realised I didn't walk past, I don't think I walked far enough, was the Ali and Nino statue. It's a statue from the story Ali and Nino. It follows the story of Nino, who is a Georgian Christian girl, and Ali, who is an Azeri Muslim boy, and they meet and fall in love. But at the time, that wasn't a done thing, sadly. So they weren't really allowed to be in love, but it just shows, it follows their love story. But it does end in tragedy. I won't go, won't give you too many spoilers, but it's a good book. I do recommend reading it. So now I'm on Batumi Boulevard. Got a little bit of information here. So it was founded in 1881, according to the project of Prussian gardener Resler, who was directly involved in the construction of the boulevard. Been through several stages of development, the new fountains. Oh, okay, so this is the boulevard that stretches all the way along the seaside, and it is seven kilometres long pretty long and I did have high hopes of going for a run along it but it just, the weather just isn't playing ball. I was gonna run around in a moment but I'm just a bit I'm a bit cold and very wet and it's quite difficult to run when it is this damp so we'll see. Anyway this is about this So I think this is where it officially begins and then yeah stretches down seven kilometers so I can imagine <laughs> on a nice today this would be lovely for running walking, cycling, all sorts. But alas, the weather is not playing ball. And then there's also like a really nice stretch of pavement here, which is lined by trees. And oh, these are nice gardens too. 
we haven't been there, but there are a uh, few things like just outside of Batumi as well. There's the Batumi Botanic Gardens, which I believe are not the biggest, but they've been voted the best in Europe. And there's also um, the, a Roman fortress, which is really cool. We were going to go yesterday, but apparently it's quite exposed. And I mean, it's raining now, but it was awful weather yesterday. So we decided to not go there. We went one day to the dead, which was very fun. But yeah, there's some things to do just outside of the city as well. And then obviously there's also all of the diversity of attractions in Ajara. Would you look at that? We've got some blue sky. Ah. Right, I'm going to jog a little bit back to where I was and then loop around on the boulevard and come back to my hotel. Got about an hour and a half until I get picked up for lunch. So yeah, that should be enough time. But yeah, I'm happy it stopped raining, although, you know, it should still start raining again. I do think I've made the best out of these couple days in between me and I really like it. It's a really, it's got a really cool vibe to it. I mean, all of Georgia has the same vibe to be honest. It's a very friendly, um, welcoming place. Everyone is very happy to see tourists and it also it has so much history, so much culture, so much diversity. We had a presentation yesterday and the lady who was giving the presentation said Georgia is a country for life <laughs> and I wholeheartedly agree. I love this stained glass window. I'm pretty sure the stained glass window is St George who is also the patron saint of Georgia and this is a bookshop my Russian is anything to go by. There are still quite a lot of signs in Russian, like behind me that means a book in Russian, but obviously they aren't trying to move away from speaking Russian, they're trying to speak Georgian, their language, but also English as a second language. And last time I was here I did speak a bit of Russian. I, I'm not I'm not a Russian speaker, I learned quite a bit when I was in Kazakhstan because it is very useful to have there. At least it was back in 2019, I don't know what the situation is like now. I came here after Kazakhstan, so I did speak a bit of Russian then, especially to older people. But now, I, I don't know, now I kind of think it's probably better to not speak it at all. I don't know, anyone got any thoughts? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. But that's just kind of the vibe I'm getting. But younger people, people probably 40 and younger, can all speak very, very good English. I guess it's a similar kind of thing to the Baltics, like, because Georgian isn't that similar to other languages, most people do learn a language and usually it is English. Interestingly as well, a lot of people here can speak Turkish because we're just over the border from Turkey and actually the Liddy from the tourism board who we were with yesterday, she can also speak Russian so they do, people do learn Russian still but I think they prefer to talk in English. And then up here is, um, this used to be the bank, the central bank of Georgia, it's got a astrological clock face. <laughs> Here's one of the ski resorts in Ajara. I would not be doing that, but <laughs> looks worth visiting. I'm not sure if I'm going to be running a kilometre, to be honest, but I did want to do a little bit of running. So I'm just running along the boulevard now. And I've made it out to the Black Sea, which is just behind me. I did say if we had some like winter sunshine, I would have gone for a swim in the Black Sea, but <laughs> I mean, I'm already wet to be fair. But I don't think I will today. But um, apparently you can swim in it until, like comfortably, until the end of October. I was nearly back at my hotel by this point and I was very damp so I went back to change into some dry clothes and then we went to lunch with the tourism board but then we headed straight to our next destination which was Skaltubo near Kutaisi. I hope I've managed to show a little bit what Batumi is like in this video. We were unlucky with the weather but I still really enjoyed my time in the city. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I will see you next time.